Um, so the last question here is talking about just more on peak week protocols and what we did differently from the first show to the next. Um, and we touched on this a little bit in the last episode, um, but I know that this person also asked for just more specifics of what all goes into peak week from a coaching perspective. Um, so do we want to answer that now or leave that for its own separate episode? I mean, episode? I, talked about, I talked about the protocol in the in Monday's episode about if we did like the back load and front load and all that mm-hmm. um, in terms of like understanding the water intake I'm big on water intake staying consistent uh, I don't think that there needs to be a water load uh, for the majority of individuals it's more of keeping things consistent across all metrics I've in years past have have taken more of an undulation or trying to manipulate the factors. Um, and, and sometimes that will put you in a place where you've got too many moving parts. And so I try to avoid the amount of moving parts to understand what's being changed to create the outcome rather than moving. Let's say that, uh, we drop water and then we spike sodium and then we, um, we take a free meal that we don't really know what the macros are on that. So we've got like five variables there that could have elicited a response, but then we're just like, well, it worked. So we're just going to redo all of it and rinse and repeat. And it's like, I'm sure that not every variable was the correct thing in that and something hit and everything else was just kind of like there. And so in that being my thought process, I'm very much more about singular movements or at least uh, maybe just two movements to make an understanding of, okay, this is what's actually eliciting this response. And we have greater control and consistency amongst 98% of the other things. And we have those two things that we're adjusting. And so um, with sodium, potassium, with all of the the peak weeks, I think we're pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. I don't think we changed a whole lot. Um, Sue, just speaking on on Sue as an individual here, she salts her meals very, very well. Um, sometimes too much for my taste buds to like for my meals, but um, she salts her meals well. So the big thing for us is just making sure that water consumption stays up as well as there's not too much of an imbalance between sodium and potassium because that is what's going to cause some of that water gradient to become you know, floating subcutaneously, if you will, and, and cause a watery look. So we just have to make sure that the lines are close. So that was one big thing there. Um, Um, No use of of diuretics. Um, I am a fan of utilizing dandelion root in years past. This year, I've I've moved away from it. I felt as though that some of the competitors that were utilizing it earlier in the year, it wasn't benefiting us. It wasn't giving us a a tighter look. It was was blurring the lines to to my um, interpretation of it. And once it's been pulled, I'm not seeing a negative effect. I'm not saying that there's been a positive effect of pulling it out, but I haven't had a negative response of individuals being watery on stage or anything of that nature. So um, dandelion root has been something I've utilized in years past. It's something that I've used with some competitors, but I'm saying as a a grand scale of things, I've I've had more success not utilizing it this year than utilizing it, but also depending on the person of how hard we had to push into peak week, because I may need it on the front end because we've um, accumulated so much inflammation because of how hard we're pushing with cardio or, or what have you into the peak week. That wasn't Sue, so that doesn't necessarily apply here. Um, Cardio-wise, we did list the entire time. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't do any hit. We kept things pretty consistent with just tracking steps and getting uh, morning, session, morning sessions in, uh, fasted sessions. Training-wise, Um, from show to, or I guess with peak week. So with peak weeks, I'm going to take an approach of utilizing metabolic training. And so this is going to be more endurance based training in the general sense, but in the context and how we're utilizing it, um, for the, the peak week is that we're trying to upregulate the expense of the ATP or the stored glycogen that we have intramuscularly. And so we're wanting to deplete the muscle bellies and that's how we're going about the training. It's going to be shorter rest periods. It's going to be some pauses in the shortened position, more uh, exercises that are going to be emphasizing the shortened range. It's not going to be long sessions, 30, 45 minutes. Um, and we're going to get in and we're going to get out and we're going to be focusing very heavily on recovery throughout the entirety of the week. So we're not trying to um, do really any muscle damage. We're more so in a state where we're 
like I said, trying to get as much rest as possible and not add more fatigue onto the body because now we're trying to freshen up. We're trying to put the body in a place where we are able to um, take the carbs in and store them intramuscularly and allow for us to have a nice balanced look as well as just adding more roundness to the muscle bellies. And so that's the goal within that training to where early on in the week, I'll be utilizing the metabolic work to work in a more of a depletion fashion. And I'll be decreasing the volume and putting ourselves in a place where it's more so just causing the signaling of, of the, the cells to be like, Hey, we need carbs over here. I would really love some carbs. Send them, send them my way, please, please, please. And that's what the training is, is in place to do. And so that's what we're doing as we get closer to the show, maybe uh, Wednesday, Wednesday session, Thursday session. And if we're training on Friday, that session is going to be that way too. So that gives you a little bit of a insight from a training standpoint.